Okay. Good morning. Um, yo, Keith is bio. Um, Nia. I'm Amelia Badger and a Sikh Um Hi, my name is Amelia Badger, and I'm here once again with uh, with with today's lesson. So this is our third lesson. So on Monday we talked about a kinagan, which is the cradle board. We went through the teachings and the understandings that have to do with a kinagan, and um, and on Wednesday we talked about art and um, and all the different um, wonderful, beautiful art, um, traditional fine arts. So um, so I and my dad we, um, we went through the different phases of arts and. Um, Today we bring a very special lesson. Um, we'll introduce the lesson um, shortly. But um, so in so in the comments below, I'm going to be posting three three videos. So the videos, the first video is going to be about tanning hides, traditional hides. So so throughout the week we talked about um, about um, hides. So. So, so this one's going to be taking a rendition on, on how to um, tan hides traditionally. Um, I, um, particularly, particularly moose hides. So then the third, no, the second video is going to be about the the, the seven um, indigenous artists. So taking a look at, at wonderful artwork um, um, from the famous seven artists. Um, um, that we have here in Canada. So then, the third, the third video is gonna take a um, um, take on horse culture. So, um, <coughs> so as today's lesson, as uh, um, as we are outside, uh, today's lesson is gonna be about uh, about horses. And uh, um, um, to us, horses are very special. And um, and 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 our life, like. Um, that my dad has raised I and my brothers in um, all have to do around horses as well and uh, um, and also taking in some time here on on the land we are on the beautiful Kwakatoa First Nation so um, so so with that uh, my dad would um, is going to be um, um, coming on in to the shop good morning everybody I want to say uh, what a beautiful day today. Um, I'm going to kind of come a little closer in here. It's a, it's a little bit breezy out here, so it might be hard to hear me from time to time. So uh, this morning, I want to uh, I wanted to um, uh, acknowledge um, uh, the Creator for giving us this beautiful day, and um, and uh, and that that we're all alive, you know, like that, you know. So I just want to say that and. Uh, just to get right into it, um, uh, I want to talk about uh, horses this morning. Uh, by all means, I'm no expert. By all means, um, I don't consider myself a cowboy in, in any sense. But what I do um, consider myself is a horse person, okay? So I enjoy horses and all the different aspects that go along with horses, okay? So um, I, I want to introduce you to our horse here. His name is Tones. Um, the boys named Tones long time ago when when uh, when when they were just little kids. Uh, one of our friends from uh, North Dakota, his name is Tone Tones, so they really enjoyed Tone Tones. So so they call this horse Tones. Okay, so Tones here is about a 12 year old uh, paint horse. Okay, and uh, we'll come on in here and we'll and we'll introduce you to him. Okay, so here's Tones right here. He's a he's a he's a really good saddle horse. Uh, we did some roping off him and different things, working with cattle and uh, stuff like that in the past. So he's a very well-trained, well-accomplished horse. Okay, and right now he's shedding. Okay, so there's uh, he's he's uh, shedding his winter his winter hair. Okay, so every time you touch him, he's he's uh, shedding all of his hair, just just like those cats and puppies that uh, live indoors. Okay, and um. <clears throat> I guess uh, one of the things I want to talk about is 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 a little bit about the history of a horse, okay? A little bit of what I know, okay? So um, uh, fossil records uh, have recorded horses actually being here on this earth 
for hundreds and hundreds of thousands of years and possibly millions of years, okay? So horses have been here for many, many winters, okay? And uh, grade six, you know, uh, uh, horses are, are very large animals. They're very, very um, uh, 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 fast. They move fast. Everything they do is fast because they are a prey animal, okay? And what I mean by a prey animal is out in the wild, horses are actually um, uh, dinner. They're, they're, they're actually food for other animals, okay? Animals like bears, uh, cougars, um, <clears throat> different, different, different types of wolves, predatory animals actually come come in come and hunt these these uh these um these these beautiful uh animals okay so they're a prey animal okay so as 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 a prey animal they have certain um uh, uh, weapons they have certain um uh, uh i guess some um, uh, things that 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 they use for for uh, their own protection so they so they use their mouth okay so they use their mouth for for protection so they bite okay so horses naturally bite and then also horses paw okay so from the front end here they they actually paw like that okay and then from the back end here they could actually kick you okay so horses kick they paw and they also um uh, bite okay so horses are prey animal and then also horses have the the instinct of flight okay and and what that means is if something scares them they will run okay it doesn't matter where they're gonna run but they're gonna run because they want to run away from danger okay so that's kind of the mind of a horse okay so 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 those are things that uh, are, are, are built into a horse's um, uh, physiology and their instincts okay so that's kind of the scientific a little bit of science around horses okay and also horses are herbivores okay so 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 a horse is a herbivore and what they do is they eat they eat plants okay so herbivores eat plants and that's all they eat primarily plants okay so they eat grasses and uh, little little hedges once in a while you know different things so um so that's a little bit about the horse okay so that's kind of a, a a little bit okay so horses in the wild they would travel every day uh they would travel 40 50 60 kilometers you know to go out and graze what to go, to go out and graze and then what they do is they go out and look for water and they look for natural salt licks okay so 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 out in the wild there are actually natural salt licks out there where animals go to uh, get minerals from the earth, okay? So, the, so there'll be an area that's uh, rich in vitamins, minerals, uh, and salt, okay? So they'll go and find those salt licks out, out, out in the wild. And horses uh, would naturally do that. And they would travel many, many kilometers per day just to get those things they need for their life, okay? So... I want to come around over here and um, show you a little bit of what horses eat, okay? So there's uh, there's a little bit of hay that I got here, and this is uh, broom grass. So horses love to eat broom grass. So that's one of their um, uh, staple foods. Uh, they 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 also like eating alfalfa as well too. So alfalfa is a, a sort of a crop uh, that farmers grow. And alfalfa is uh, very, very uh, high in protein and different things that horses need to develop and grow and to maintain proper health, okay? Then also over here, we have a little bit of um, oats, okay? So, so we have a little bit of oats here. So horses love to eat oats and uh, oats uh, are like candy for, for horses, okay? So, so usually when... Uh, when a horse is working, what I'll do is, is, is I'll give him one of these in the morning, okay? Uh, just before we go out to go and work, rope and and work cattle and, uh, you know, even even long, uh, like strenuous um, uh, uh, um, uh, activities, okay? So I'll give him one of these in the morning. And then when I come back, when I'm done working, what I'll do is I'll allow my horse to cool down and to relax. 
and then I'll give him one more of these. So I'll give him another another um, uh, uh, scoop of oats, okay? So um, uh, we're gonna come in close here. We're gonna come in close here to the, to the horse here, okay? So um, uh, like I said, I'm, I'm no expert. I'm no expert on horses, but what little I know, I, I, I wanna share with you. So each part of the horse has a different name, okay? So, uh, so uh, science, I guess, veterinarians and stuff like that, all, people out there that are professionals, they actually um, uh, name the parts of the body. So uh, right here we have the jowl, right here, right here. So this is the horse's jowl. And then right here, from here to here, that's the horse's throat latch, okay? Then of course we have the nostrils right here. The, and then we have his muzzle right here. So this is the horse's muzzle right here. And then we have his eyes and we have his ears. And then right here, up on top here, right here, that's what we call the pole, okay? So it's called the pole. So right here we have the horse's neck right here. And then we have the horse's mane as well too. So the, so, so the horse has hair up here, it's called the mane. And then right here we have the horse's chest right here. This is the horse's chest. And then this is the horse's shoulder right here. Okay, so this is the shoulder. And then right here we have the forearm. So 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 this is the horse's forearm or foreleg. And then we right, right here we have the cannon bone. Right here, this is the cannon bone. And then right here we have the heart girth. So this is where the saddle goes and this is where the girth goes, you know, for the for the horse right here. So this is the heart girth area. And then right here, up up on top here, we have the withers, okay? So we have the horse's withers right here. So, so this is what holds the saddle when you're riding the horse and you, and you put the saddle on top here. So this is what holds the saddle in place right here, the withers, okay? Then right from here to here, we have the back. So this is the back part. And then right here, we have the flank right here. This is called the flank. And then, and then right here, we have the rib cage right here, the rib cage. Then right back over here, we, this is what we call the hip, okay? So this is the horse's hip. And then there's some parts in the back here that have some very uh, complicated names, but uh, some people call this the stifle area, right here. This is the stifle. And then back there, we have the cannon bone again. And then we have his hocks as well too. So right here, this is his hawk right here. And then we have his tail, okay? So, so this is his tail, and um, some uh, some animal behaviorists actually say that the tail and the ear, the 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 ears of a horse, actually indicate how a horse is feeling. Okay, so if a horse is not feeling, you know, uh, particularly uh, happy, or maybe they're feeling kind of aggressive, what they'll do is they'll pin their ears back, so their ears will pin back. And then they'll start to swish their tail like that, back and forth, or their tail will stand straight up like that. So, so when you're working with horses, what we were always told was to watch their behavior, watch their watch watch how they behave, you know, and to see if they're happy or 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 if they're not happy, you know, like that. So, or 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 even if they're scared too, you know. So, so when a horse is scared, when a horse is frightened, they'll let you know with their body language. Okay. So from there, um, I want to come in close here on the foot, okay? So the foot, the foot of the horse is a very, very, uh, very important part of a horse, okay? So their foot is 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 um uh, is uh, similar to our nails, okay? He my my nails are dirty, but anyways, uh, our nails that is the same material that a horse has on their foot, okay? So a horse's hoof is very, very important. So out in the wild, a horse would be moving all day long and and uh, moving around and, and, you know, searching for food, searching for water. And as they move around, the ground would naturally wear away at, at, at their feet, okay? So what we what we do, because, because we have horses in, in uh, captivity now, you know, horses have been... Uh, have 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 been uh, a part of our lives for many many years, you know, hundreds if not thousands of years, you know. So now in captivity, what we have to do is we have to take these uh, these uh, hoof nippers, 
and we have to trim their feet trim them down to size okay so kind of like how mom takes your, your your fingers and clips your nails same thing so but it's just on a larger scale so we use these tools and then here's a hoof rasp okay so here's a hoof rasp if, if you could see it's very very coarse you know and it's for uh, filing down and we use a knife here as well too to uh to to pare away the sole of the foot okay so these are some of the tools we use and um i also want to uh, acknowledge you know uh, a little bit of um uh, sort of the other horse cultures from around the world and uh, uh a, a little story that was told to me by, by my grandpa so long long time ago my grandpa told us uh that, that um i guess we had horses here uh in north america long long ago before the arrival of uh of uh of uh the europeans way before like hundreds and maybe even thousands of years but this story that was told came down from generation to generation and my grandpa said long ago we had horses and i guess you know in 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 our country here on our lands we had warfare way back then so um we were at war you know with neighboring tribes over whatever you know hunting hunting uh uh waterways or whatever you know but we were at war and i guess some uh <clears throat> We were starting to uh, uh, really, I, I guess, I guess, kill one another at an alarming pace. I guess, and my grandpa said that uh, we were killing each other off too fast. Wes, Wes, and um, I guess some um, uh, there was this young boy. I guess he had a dream. He in in this vision. I guess this horse came to him, and uh, and I told him. He said. Brother, he said, if, if your people do not stop fighting and killing one another, I am going to leave you. That, that's what that horse come and told that little boy in a vision. So I guess, you, you, you know, he woke up the next morning and he told his dad. And here his dad was the chief. He says, Dad, I, I, I had this dream last night. This horse come and see me and told me this. So I want to tell you that, you know, maybe we should quit fighting. So I guess like, you know, how things go, they continue to fight. And then the story goes is, 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 is the horses began to get sick, began to get sick. <clears throat> and the horses died out here in North America, all over the place. You know, all the horses died and we were left with no horses. So we couldn't fight the way we used to fight we we weren't at war no more because we we're busy walking around you know trying to survive so so my grandpa said that's when we got into the dog age so from there we uh we made friends with the dog and then we used the dog for hundreds or maybe thousands of years and then here fast forward to uh to um, uh, um contact and the spaniards down in uh south and middle america and the southern united states they had horses they bring horses with them from uh from uh, spain and these horses uh began to run wild so indigenous people sort of you know came across these horses and automatically they knew what to do they knew how to train the horse they knew how to ride the horse they know how to utilize the horse and very strong strong cultures you know that 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 are based on horse culture so that story my grandpa told me you know i i i usually like to share it with uh, people you know so i want to acknowledge um uh, some of the 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 different horse cultures out there um such as the nez pierce you know down in uh, uh north uh western uh united states they 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 um uh, have a beautiful horse culture down there you know the lakota people they have a beautiful horse culture and stories and songs dances you know horse dances you know and the navajo as well too they have beautiful culture you know and then beyond that you know you have these other different cultures around the world like such as the mongolians you know they have a beautiful horse culture 
and they use the horses for hunting and they use the horses for 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 sustenance and life you know and then you have all these other different genres of um uh, of a uh, horse culture such as you, you know the texas type cowboys and the spanish vaqueros of uh the south and the south the the southwest as well too you know so 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 there's all kinds of different horse culture out there you know and 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 there's a lot of different employment that people could get through horses as well too you know you, you, you could be a professional farrier you know and a farrier is a person that that goes around to um uh, horse owners and and trims hooves and also uh, nails nails on um, horseshoes on 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 horses you know so professional farriers you could also become a uh, large animal veterinarian as well too you know and work with horses and cattle you know and different different um, uh, animals different farm animals and you know horse culture is 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 um uh, is is sort of natural for indigenous people you know i've i've uh, worked with a lot of indigenous people and and when they start to work with horses it's just like reacquainting with an old friend all the time you know so there's always um uh, always a good close connection between indigenous people and horses so um i wanted to share that with you and, and then uh kind of um uh, talk to you I want to uh, talk to you a little bit about uh, being safe around horses as well too you know so so you always hear these um uh, people say don't walk behind a horse yeah yes it's true but you know if you know the horse and if you understand a horse you know you could walk behind a horse you know but a strange horse do not trust a strange horse that you do not know okay so what I'm going to talk to you a little bit about is grooming a horse too okay so right here we have a little bit of um uh, grooming tools that we use so this is um this is called a curry comb uh i guess people have different names for it it's a it's it's a it's a it's a wire comb or whatever and this is good for taking off the his spring hair okay his his winter hair and we have another uh brush here this is what i like to use when we're going to saddle up a horse okay so i'll show you a little bit about uh, how to uh comb a horse okay so if you could see right here a horse is um uh, uh their hair go in a certain direction okay so a horse's hair will will naturally grow in a certain direction so what you want to do is you want to comb this horse going with the horse's hair okay and i'm gonna have a mouthful of hair after this i know it i know it but um uh, i just want to demonstrate to you you know so and just to just to show you that you do not want to go and against the horse's hair like that see like that see it must be uncomfortable so what you want to do is you want to go with the grain with with the horse's natural uh, growth kind of the way it grows like that okay and then you come back here like that and you give them a little give them a little combing down you know like that and if you could see him, he's, he, he kind of put his head down and he kind of closed his eyes a little bit because this must feel good to him, you know, getting a nice scratching, a nice combing down like that. So, so like that. And then I was telling you about being safe on horses. So I know this horse. I know him. We've ridden him for many years and he's safe. Okay, so I could come back here. And I can walk behind him as well too. Then what I'll do is I'll I'll ask him to move. Like this. Ask him to move over. Okay. okay. So I asked him to move over a little bit here. And then we'll come on this side here. And we'll uh, comb him down. See all the hair coming off? There's a lot of hair. That's his that's his winter fur. Okay. So all of his winter hair. It's going to be falling off towards the spring here and um, you could probably you could probably weave a blanket out of it how much hair he has but um uh, horses are very very well suited for the environment okay so horses grow um their winter hair in the fall time and uh it's it's, it's just an extra layer of uh, protection for them from the cold okay so, so, so horses are very, very well adapted 
to the environment, okay? And uh, also, I wanted to uh, kind of share with you that uh, that um, uh, uh, horses, um, the way it was told to me by uh, some old, old cowboys, they always told me, they said, when you're working with horses, always come to them with a good frame of mind. Uh, make sure that you're not angry. Make sure you're feeling good, you know, when you work with a horse. Because a horse has, has very, very, um, uh, 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 very attuned, you know, um, I guess senses. So we were talking about senses the other day. A horse has a very, very keen sense and they could sense you if you're feeling angry or if you're not feeling good and what they will do is they will react to you okay so the old horsemen they, they used to tell me when you're working with horses always work with them gently in a good manner you know and then always you know enjoy yourself when you're working with a horse and that way the horse will also enjoy themselves as well okay so 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 i just wanted to let you know that and uh, that uh, horses have 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 a special place in indigenous people's hearts, okay, uh, on many levels because we have horse dances, we have horse art, you know, and we've always ridden horses, and we've always had um, uh, wagon horses, you know. So the old people of the past, you know, they 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 had a lot to do with horses. They they had a lot of good things that they that they received from the horse, you know. And um, I'm I'm timing myself right now, so I I I I don't want to go over time, but I want to make sure that I give you a good lesson, you know, and talk to you about horses and and for the passion of horses and things like that, you know. So with that, uh, we're about 27 minutes in, and I don't want to go over because Chris Scribe will be. Uh, Will be very angry with me if I go over time, okay? Because Chris is uh, enjoys uh, time management, and um, I want to introduce you all to somebody here. Uh, we have a special friend here, and he he's 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 a part of our family, and he's uh, his name is Leonard, okay? So I want to introduce you to this guy right here. So Leonard, Leonard is our little friend, okay? So, so, so I want to introduce you to Leonard, okay? Come on, Leonard. So, Leonard acts up once in a while. So here's Leonard, okay? Here's Leonard. Leonard, say hi to the, hi to the people. Hello, think indigenous. So, so here's Leonard. He's our little miniature donkey, okay? So, Leonard's a pretty cool guy. He has nice big ears, beautiful eyes. He has nice bangs, you know, he has a nice little muzzle. Leonard, cool dude, okay? So that's Leonard, and I want to introduce you to him. Say that uh, we, had a, we had a beautiful time here, and I want to thank you for all listening and being a part of our, uh, our week of um, uh, teaching and learning. So... With that, uh, I'll hand it back over to my daughter, Amelia. Okay, I'd like to say thank you, Dad, for all your wonderful teachings the rest of the week. I'd like to thank everyone who tuned in and watched for your wonderful comments and uh, um, and just being very attentive. And um, also, also students, you know, I hope you learned something um, throughout this week through, you know, Akinagan, the art, the horses, um, all of these teachings are very wonderful. They hold so much value, and I'm very thankful, you know, that, that my dad had taught me that throughout my life, and that we're able to share it here with you um, th this week. So I am going to be posting videos to the bottom, so go, um, some wonderful YouTube videos, so go and um, take a watch, and I hope you students are keeping yourself busy, and keeping yourself, um, um, your minds going. I'd like to say thank you to Chris Scribe and all of the team at Think Indigenous. Um, thank you for um, allowing me and my dad to come in to be able to share some knowledge with you. Um, I just really hope that you guys enjoyed it. So thank you um, once again and ask him a ten. Hi, hi. And, okay, and my dad's going to say something as well. So, um, uh,
like Amelia said, uh, I want to uh, also extend my gratitude to all of you for listening and um, going along with us and learning and um, saying thank you to Chris. You know, hi, hi, little brother. Thank you for your um, uh, for your for your thoughts of uh, delivering education. You know, through this medium. Also, I would like to um, uh, acknowledge all of uh, all of the nurses out there that are that are working so hard to keep our communities um, uh, healthy and uh, safe. Uh, to the first responders that are out there, I want to say thank you. Uh, at this time, you know, this time of our history here, this is a very uh, very um, uh, interesting time. So I want to say thank you to them. Um, also, uh, if uh, if if we we um. Uh, as, as as indigenous people you know think about it you know like uh being home on our on our reservations on the reserve you know in, enjoy your time with your families you know love one another uh teach one another uh learn from each other also that um uh, your children should continue the education process and if it and if it means you at home here teaching your child certain values of life you know how to cook how to clean how to do things around the house you know teach them that in a good way you know and with that um uh, i want to say uh leonard says uh, hi hi miigwech and then Bones also says hi hi miigwech so thank you very much oh